not a 97 year old woman. Um, uh, we're moving on into genres now, and from this point forward, after today, you're going to be the ones in charge of teaching the class, based on that description that I gave you last week. Um, so I'm going to try to model that today. Remember, it's connected off of our readings, and it is um, also needs to be have some interactive elements, focusing on what are the specific genres of the elements that kids need to read and write. And I'm picking a topic today that's near and dear to my heart. We're going to start with poetry, um, because when I talk to kids who love to write, chances are they write poetry. That's what they choose. People that write on their own for free time do nowadays either do one of two things. They either blog or they write poetry. Or they put poetry on their Tumblr blog. Um, but that's, but at the same time, a huge majority of kids hate poetry. We just teach it so bad. And we ruin it. So I've always been interested. This is the oldest form of literature in human history. Why, how do we ruin something that has been around for thousands of years for kids? Obviously, there's something about poetry that people like. So what do we do as teachers so kids don't hate it? For me, it's about finding their voice. So why do we write poetry? Why? Why do people write poetry? Take two seconds, jot down some ideas. Or if you're on Google+, um, add an entry and write a few, write a few um, ideas down and post it to Google Plus. That's my online class. For you folks who are just doing out of a favor, why do you think we write poetry? Anyone want to share their thinking? What are some of the ideas? Yes, ma'am. Like strong emotion and train the emotion. Yeah, it's about emotion. It's about raw truth. It's about the human condition. What is it's poetry is what separates us from the apes, in my opinion. It's it captures the essence of what it means to be alive in raw emotion and truth. So today, we're going to focus in on, and this is something I want to see in your teaching, where you guys kind of summarize the goals of your lesson. We're going to recognize, first, that poetry is ideas and emotion. Uh, we're not going to define types of poetry, but types of poetry. Compare methods to teach poetry with uh, technology. And we're going to finish off with two folks reading, responding, and then writing poetry today. You do not have to write down the objectives. I'm just summarizing for you. So, I love this quote. Painting is silent poetry, and poetry is painting and speaking. That's what you need to do. You need to paint a picture for your audience with your words. And you need to recognize when you read poetry, the brush strokes of emotion that authors put on the paper. And for me, poems come from two places. Emotion and ideas. Some kind of pain. Or some kind of idea, some kind of inspiration. Maybe it's some special tree, or the death of someone, or a beautiful fall day. Some kind of idea. 
And oftentimes, the emotion and the idea are intertwined into verse. So, in your writer's notebook right now, or on a, another Google Plus entry, answer these two questions real quick. What are the emotions and ideas shown in poetry? What emotions or ideas make for bad poems? Take a few minutes, jot down some ideas. In your writer's notebook, or pause the presentation, go to Google Plus, and answer these prompts there. Um, and you'll notice it's important when you're <laughs> teaching and you're writing and you ask your students to do it for your eyes, do it for yourself too. Not the time you grade a paper or check in Facebook. Um, you really want to model the practices of writing your classroom together. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, got a little voice back. Um, so try to, or just try to really model what you're asking the students to do. Just, so does anybody have anything they would like to share? Go ahead. 
death and quotes and work. New beginnings and closings, endings and conclusions, cycles of life, very common topics. Yeah, the human nature. We'd be some nasty folks. Where would we be? Wells of kindness. Anybody get super creative and try it as a poem? Well, this is mine. It's probably awful. Lost in love. Not the mundane. Not the mundane. So many endings to unhappy conclusions. Pain, despair, misery. Not picket fences or cookie cutter lives in manufactured, manicured lawns. It may be unnatural beauty. A raindrop or a single snowflake, a solitary sunray, screaming in a room full of silence, alone in a crowd, illusions of loss, hope forgotten, not joy eternal. So those are like my ideas of where poems are actually from. Um, and you've got to just pull them from my, your writing and give your kids a chance to think about it. So what does a poem need to look like in the chain of poem. You need five things in the list. Go. Five things in the list. What is a poem? Mm -hmm. No, 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 right. Give me five things. Bullet list or what makes a poem a poem? readings as we talk about this. In different ways that you can use poetry in the, in the classroom. <laughs> Alright, so somebody give me one. What makes a poem? Some kind of pattern, a verse maybe? What else? The rhymes. Maybe it rhymes? What else? Metaphors might be some literary devices. Empty meter. What? Meter. Meter. It's got some kind of prosody, some kind of beat. Anybody else for anything? This is my list. It's blank. It's such a hard thing to find. For me, would this be a poem? Yeah. Well, because yeah, it's Italian Kirk, so it's like, oh, he's a pain to be a poet, so it might be a poem. So it's no rhyme. I don't think I see a, uh, a similar metaphor. So based on the list you gave me, that's not a poem. There is some, there might be that beat to it, actually. Look at this one. All this poem. Surprise me what it means, what it says. Concrete poems, which take the form of shapes. Gentle breeze blew all morning long, picked up leaves along the way, blew past streets and packed up. Yeah, you get the point. Or I the Franco verse.
So they're all poems. Basically, you should be looking at a subject, a goal, tone, and flow. You want to say the most, in the fewest words possible, maybe using some literary devices. A lot of imagery and sensory writing. But it has to have that kind of subject, goal, tone, and flow. Some do it better than others. So, it's really about that kind of emotion and that senses. So pick one of these three pictures. It might be a poem. Your writer's notebook or post the poem to Google Plus. Pause the video and head on over and post your poem. Ready? Start writing. Now, I would normally never teach poetry in one forty minute session. I've taken time, you didn't it pretty much here. I have entire classes, but just trying to cover how you could teach it. But you're seeing how when I'm teaching, I'm kind of making these interactive. We're doing turning talks, we're sharing, we're writing. So when you guys do your talks and you teach us about the genre, and when you're in the class, don't just sit up here and let your making and interact. There's nothing wrong with doing this stuff, especially when you're learning new content. For some of you, English majors, a lot of this is review. Um, but for a lot of you, you may not have heard this. So who wants to share? Come on, somebody that's brave. You know, writers out there. Nobody? I'll never make, I never force anyone to share their writing. It's also a general rule that I have. Okay, we'll move on. Oh, wait, look at that. Yay. <laughs> Child soldier. Yeah. Looking at him short and thin, holding a gun with his bitter intent. I can't picture him as he drew. I picture a quarter old with me. He may be small and he may not be tall, but the little boy can see it all. Yeah, so you captured a lot in the rhyme. 
and none of the rhymes seemed forced. So poems can come up. I love using pictures with my students all the time. Poems. Especially when you take, like, raw emotional issues are great for poetry. Like, we have a happy baby, a sharecropper, and a child soldier. I was seen it all. I liked how you concluded there. So, I break poems down into kind of two types of form and function. Formats or themes. Some poems follow very specific formats. You did. You had a rhyming pattern. That's a format-based poem. Other poems might be grouped by theme, like a metaphor poem or a free group. So, some basic form poems, you don't have to write these down, I'm just giving you examples. Like the acrostic poem that I so wholeheartedly despise. Or the haiku, or the sonnets, or lyrics. In 308, I, I say that, I, I hate it in upper elementary. In early childhood, I've said it over and over again acrostic poems are a great way to reinforce beginning writing and name recognition. So there it has a purpose. But I've seen too many of my students just try to get out of writing poetry by saying, I'm going to do an acrostic poem. So I like the haiku or the limerick. Falling to the ground, I watch a leaf settle down in a bed of brown. Or the limerick. There once was a lady named Cager who, had, as a result of a wager, consented to fart in the entire oval part of Mozart's quartet in F major. You know, they have specific forms that have to be followed. Other poems have a function, like the ode, or the extended metaphor poem, or the narrative poem, like the um, Ginsburg poem about the supermarket. It's telling a story. Those poems don't have to follow specific line forms. They have a specific they accomplish a function. So that's why I group poems into those two types, form and function. Again, you don't have to write these down. And this will always be posted on YouTube with the rest of my bad lectures. This one just sounds like I've been auto-tuned already. But what poets really need to do is they need to play with lines. You have to decide what you want to do with your lines. Where do they end? Why are they short? Especially in free verse poems where you're not following <coughs> specific forms. In my example, some lines had were written in three, some are written in four, some are written in fives, ones, like repetition. Maybe you repeat the same line over and over again. That has a very powerful effect. Like if you were to take your poem and maybe put in um, seen it all, he has seen it all, he's seen it all, like throughout the poem, that changes the meaning. That's this kind of omnipresence to it. So as a poet, you folks need to have fun with your lines. Play with them. Tweet them. Another thing you have to do is fool around with sensory writing, tone, and mood. And your sensory writing, this is a big goal in elementary writing, that can really change the tone and mood of the poem. So I want you to do, what is sensory writing? So let me define that for me. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, writing with your senses. See, hear, taste, feel, touch. But how you describe those, how you use your sensory details, totally changes the meaning of your writing. And poetry is a great way, this is something you do in all of your writing. And poetry is a great way to practice this. And they talk about this in our readings. 
So I would like you to write me a very quick short poem. Take this out. Happy place. Snow drift covered mountain. Make it a happy place. Sensory details in there as many as possible. Happy. Looking for those sensory details. A happy poem. Anyone want to share? Try not. We'll go. Kissing the heavens and touched by grace. Snow speckled glistening. Glistening in light. Listening in truth. Suddenly a star, a star appears as night settles for a cool breeze. Descending on evergreens, we whisper the hopes of yesteryear, for, for, forever frozen atop the gateway to the sky. So that's mine. I try to get like a touch in there, I try to get that, the, the feeling of the cool breeze. Anybody else want to go? Alright, make it up. Four. Big. Make it a scary place, full of danger, and despair, and death. Same picture, different mood, different tone. Go.
right, who's an example they want to share? Somebody asked them one. I mean, I'm willing to share mine. They suck. Writers take chances. Somebody wants to share. Got a room for you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> huh? Sorry, I said. Big snowy mountain, cold to the touch, cold in your soul. Never feeling more alone than when you're on the big snowy mountain of your escape. Yeah, that, that sense of foreboding, not escaping. I love the repetition too. Um, and then the switch from the mountain to the soul. That there was kind of this allegory that this mountain represented something. So nice job. Anybody else? Now, I'm not going to go through all the types of figures of language. Um, a, you folks should have learned this in high school, after in middle school. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that poets, these are the tools that poets use. They do things with similes and metaphors and alliteration and personification and hyperbole and symbolism, onomatopoeia, rhyme, assonance, consonance, repetition, etc., etc., et. Love when I spell mistakes in my recording projects. So you have to think of ways to teach these devices to your students. But they should never, ever become the focus of your poetry units. See, all too often when people teach poems, they just have a worksheet on metaphor. And the next day they do a worksheet on, you know, similes. The poets and the poems and the emotions and the truth, that has to be what you're trying to teach. So finding those literary devices, lame. I have seen the most common products I've seen is kids have to put a poetry book together. They have to find one poem with a personification, one poem with a metaphor, one poem with a simile. It's like this stupid scavenger hunt that disconnects poetry from the raw emotion and truth that it's found. So I look for other ways to teach poetry. This is a, a remix and poem that I made. To take a poem and hold it up to the light by Billy Collins. Color slide, or press an ear against its high. I say drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe his way out. Or walk inside the poem's room feel the walls for a <laughs> I want them to water ski across the surface of the poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. But all they want to do is tie the poem to the chair with a rope and torture the confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. That's Billy Collins. And that's what we don't need to do. So what I did, instead of just having my kids reflect the poems, I do projects where we do these kinds of remixes, where I respond to poetry by getting movies and slides, getting the verse of poems, and making multimodal poetry projects. Instead of, let's do it, let's go find five poems of the simile. Wait. So other things you can do, To, how can we delve deep into the human experience? How can we not just find literary devices, but examine the author's craft? Question the lines. How did that poet play with those lines? Why did they choose that spot for a simile? Why that comparison? Why that vehicle for a metaphor? So look for emotions, look for truth, not meaning. Don't beat the meaning out of it with a hose, as Billy Collins says. Here's another example. Now this is an original multimodal poem. What I had my students do for this project, and this is a student-created project, 
is they first had to write a paragraph about a social issue. Then they circled words that spoke to the, the mood of that issue, the tone of the poem. They then took those words, wrote a poem, and then created a movie about with that poem as its central. Oops. Three point five million people. This guy slept on my stoop last night. The population of the state of Oregon. I wish you could just get a few more hours of sleep. Probably some crazy Vietnam vet. I have a PhD in computer science. I have a family. There are as many reasons for homelessness as there are homeless people. Probably got drunk and passed out there. Three point five million reasons. Smells like you peed there first. Mental illness, physical disability, abusive homes, unemployment, economic downturn. I need to get my kids to school. The cops should really do something about this. My poor kids, they don't, don't deserve this. 1.35 million children will face homelessness this year. I should get a job. I used to own a business before this economy went to shit. Disgusting. I didn't choose this. I would never choose this. So think about the kind of creativeness that had to go into that whole project from investigating an issue, writing an essay, circling key words, writing a poem, a multi-voice multi voice poem to boot, finding the images, and then using iMovie or movie making or Wii video to kind of make that poem. I love the idea of taking the oldest genre in the world, poetry, and mixing it with our newest forms of text, such as the multimodal compositions that we're doing now. Here's another example of a project. Hold on. In this project, students had to take and make what's called a documentary poem. Um, Trethaway, who's our current poet laureate, she writes about document poems in Moscow. Full scale offensive. Not half scale. Not even three quarters. No quarter. That's what it is. More than just a skirmish. The seventh fleet. Fleet of sail. Churning down the strait. Straight towards what? Commitment? Oh, yes, and more. Committed to hold that sacred line. The 38th, where the third phase froze my blood, and the fifth phase froze the war. Stalemate. A battle fought not against the PVA, the KPA, but time itself, the enemy of all men. So many hours into days, days into years, Chinese New Year. Chinese spring. Old Baldi's white paint dyed red. Stalin's flag for all to see. 53 at the 38th. The brass gleams in my hand. The last one. The last one. Shining like the noonday sun. I breathe air unclouded by gun smoke. I begin to cry. So with that project, they had to find a primary document, annotate that document, find a voice that was lost in history, and narrate a poem about that person, or that narrator, and upload the poem to SoundCloud, um, which is like a, you guys probably use SoundCloud for like music and DJs and stuff. Um, I mean, really, the best music on SoundCloud. Um, but we create little poetry projects there too. So there's lots of innovative ways to teach poetry that go beyond your stupid scavenger hunt of similes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to practice one now. That's something you will do in your 
Most importantly, in all those poems, you saw people exploring agency. They are finding their voice or the voice of others. And that's really what poetry can do for students. Especially those who have real emotional, raw emotion to get out. Poetry provides an avenue for your voice to paint a picture for the world. So this is the activity attached to the event. And I chose this because this will have you, and you'll do this with your genres. We're going to read it the genre. You're going to briefly write in the genre. You'll also notice I did a lot of interactive things such as turn and talks. We we're doing a lot of quick writes. So you're not, it wasn't just me talking for 45 minutes. So as you guys prepare your own units, you can do something similar.